When we hear the stories of the initial contacts between the Spanish and the Taino in Puerto Rico, or the Caribbean in general for that matter, many automatically assume that the Taino or any Amerindians were completely peaceful people who lived in paradise. And although there might be some truth to this, it's not completely true. According to Christopher Columbus, who wrote extensively about his encounters with the Arawak people in the Caribbean, he describes an account how a group of Arawak who were traveling between islands on one of the Spanish ships reacted when they saw an island they believed to be inhabited by Caribs. The Arawak said that this land was very extensive and that in it were people who had one eye and the forehead and others whom they called cannibals. Of these last, they showed great fear, and when they saw that this course was being taken, they were speechless. He continues, because those people ate them, and because they are very warlike. A similar entry describes how upon seeing a certain island, the Arawak were speechless, fearing that they would be eaten, and a crew member could not calm their terror, and they said that the people there had only one eye and the face of a dog. Although no substantial evidence has been found to prove that the Carib Indians were in fact cannibals, there's no question of the fear they invoked on the rest of the indigenous population in the Caribbean. According to scholars, the populating of the Caribbean began around 5000 BC by Paleolithic Indians, and then Mesolithic Indians would enter around 1000 to 500 BC. The origins of these populations is believed to be from South America, the areas of what is now Colombia and Venezuela to be more specific. Among the latter groups of the Mesolithic Indians would be the Taino, a subgroup of the Arawak, and the Carib Indians. These two groups would be involved in a series of conflicts long before the Spanish arrived or any Europeans for that matter. In fact, it has been argued that the Carib Indians were responsible for the migration of the Taino out of South America and more into the Northeastern Caribbean due to raids. These conflicts stemmed from differences in culture, resources, and territorial disputes. The Taino were primarily agricultural and had established settled villages, while the Carib were known as skilled warriors and practiced a more nomadic lifestyle. This difference in lifestyle and resource utilization often led to competition and tension between the two groups. The Carib Indians were known to be aggressive and warlike, often engaging in raids to obtain resources, including women from the neighboring tribes. The Taino, being a sedentary agricultural society became a frequent target of Carib raids. The Carib sought to expand the territories and dominate the region, leading to violent conflicts and clashes with the Taino. And although the Taino were in general way more peaceful, they had no choice but to resort to violence to counter the aggression of the Carib Indians. It is important to note that while conflicts did occur, there were also instances of cultural exchange and cooperation between the Taino and the Carib. Interactions between the two groups were not solely characterized by violence. The Taino and the Carib both had their own distinctive cultures and languages, but there were instances of intermarriage and adoption of certain aspects of each other's societies. Overall, the Taino relations and conflicts with the Carib Indians were complex and multifaceted. However, the conflicts usually downplayed any cooperation that might have existed and dominated the relationship between these groups. These conflicts played a significant role in shaping the social dynamics of the Caribbean islands during that time. When the Spanish first appeared in the Caribbean, they were initially welcomed by the Taino as possible potential allies against the Carib Indians. In fact, the Spaniards couldn't have come at a better time, and they quickly understood this. They even took notice of minor conflicts and disagreements within the Taino groups and caciques, and used it all to their advantage to further their objective 
of colonization. The Spanish used four main tactics to exploit these tensions, including number one, divide and conquer. The Spanish exploited the existing conflicts and rivalries between the Taino and the Carib Indians by playing them against each other. They provided military support and allied themselves with one group against the other, effectively weakening both sides. Number two, diplomatic manipulation. The Spanish utilized diplomacy to their advantage. They established alliances with certain Taino chiefs by offering them trade benefits and protection while isolating and marginalizing those who resisted Spanish dominance. By manipulating these alliances, they further fueled tensions between the indigenous groups. Number three, promoting cultural superiority. The Spanish sought to establish their cultural and religious dominance in the region. They often portrayed themselves as superior to the indigenous people, emphasizing the benefits of conversion to Christianity and European civilization. This cultural superiority complex further widened the pre-existing divisions between the Taino and Carib Indians. Number four, forced labor and exploitation. The Spanish exploited both the Taino and Carib Indians through forced labor, particularly in mining and agricultural activities. They enslaved many indigenous people and subjected them to harsh working conditions, further aggravating tensions and perpetuating conflict between the groups. There did come a time when the indigenous people of Puerto Rico and the Caribbean realized that the Spanish were more of a threat and a menace to their existence and way of life than any conflicts they might have had among each other. They even allied themselves against the Spanish and major conflicts such as the rebellion of 1511. However, by then it was a little too late. Disease brought by the Europeans had ravaged their numbers and by that time the Spanish had already consolidated their presence in the area. It is important to note that the tactics used against the Taino and Caribs to promote colonization were not exclusive to the Spanish as many European colonizers utilized similar strategies to further their interests during the colonial era. Let us know what you think in the comment section below. Help us to spread this video by sharing. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell for more videos.